The Burge Law Office specializes in RV lemon law nationwide. The following is not legal advice. For additional information, see rvlemonlaw.com. The RV Show USA. Start living the RV dream today. If you spend any time at all on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you know, any time at all on social media, it won't take long until you figure out there's a lot of people who are complaining about having a problem RV. They may even say that they have a, a lemon RV. Well, the reality is that there's not nearly as many lemon RVs as people think there are, but there are still way too many. And if you have one, man, it can be a nightmare, especially if the dealer or the manufacturer stalls and won't take care of you. That's why how you make your warranty claim is so very, very important. Let's get right into it with our badass RV lemon lawyer, Ron Burge. Explain to me the difference in layman terms of an RV warranty versus my traditional auto or truck warranty. Ron, I mean, what's the, what are the basic differences? Oh, that's pretty easy because actually when you think about the, the car or the truck that you buy, you get the factory warranty with it when it's new and you get a factory warranty with the RV when it's new. The difference between the two though is night and day because when you get a car or, or a truck that's brand new, you get one warranty that covers it. Doesn't matter what it is that's going wrong, it's covered by the factory warranty that comes with the new car or the new pickup truck. Everything except for the, the tires themselves is covered essentially by the factory warranty. Right. Turn around and look at an RV. When you look at an RV, you remember when you bought your first new RV and everyone ever since then, you got a satchel, <laughs> a satchel full of documents. Sometimes it's literally a box or a briefcase, yeah. but there's just you know somewhere between 50 and 75 or 80 or so manuals or pieces of paper or documents or whatever having to do with all the appliances and the, the components as well as the RV itself. In other words, you got a box of warranties or a box of warranty rights, each one of which applies to a specific little thing inside the RV. And someplace, there's one from the factory that basically says they cover the RV living quarters and everything else in the RV typically except for anything where you got a warranty from the maker of it. So so but it's not an umbrella. Warranty. It's not an umbrella no. warranty. It's a specific or RV warranty is very specific to just the RV itself and that all the components may have their own separate warranty. Yeah, in fact, I guess uh, thinking of the umbrella, that's a good way to look at it. When you get a car, a new car or a new truck, you get an umbrella warranty that covers everything but the tires. When you get an RV, you get an umbrella warranty. It's just got a whole lot of holes in it that you got to fill in with all these other little warranties on the different components. So, so when I, as an RV owner, have an issue on a, whatever, a, a refrigerator, my air conditioner, uh, I may think that that is covered under my RV's warranty, but that's not necessarily true. That's what I'm hearing from you. It's covered maybe, but not under your RV's warranty. It depends. There's most of the warranties don't cover anything except those items that are not covered by some other warranty that you get from the manufacturer of it. There's a couple of them out there that actually are worded in a way that would allow the entire RV to be covered. But most of them don't do that. You, you for instance, have a problem with your television, the microwave or the television or something like that. You go pull the manual and you look to see, is there a warranty in there that goes straight to you as the owner of it? If so, then there's no RV warranty whatsoever on it. So you don't contact the manufacturer in that regard. You contact whoever made the microwave or whatever you're going after. Well, you can do it either way. Most of the RV companies also have a, a backroom deal, so to speak, where if a component goes bad that they don't actually warrant, they can go ahead and get the repair work done at the local dealer, and then they will pay the dealer for it. And then in the back room, so to speak, they'll send a bill off to whoever made that particular component. I hear that, uh, you know, automobile warranties, and I know that they're different franchise agreements. RV industry does not have the same similar franchise agreements. But if you have a, if I buy brand X and I'm in Washington state and I travel to North Carolina and I have a problem with brand X, that dealer, the Brand X dealer in North Carolina, is supposed to work on my RV, but the reality is a whole lot different. 
Explain how that works so I know and the people who are who may have a warranty issue and they're on the road, how will that affect them? They've got a, an RV they bought over here in Washington State, for example. They go to North Carolina and they have an issue. And they ought to be able to go to any one of those dealers who normally sells that product to get a repair. But the problem is, legally, most of the time, the dealer doesn't have to do anything. And that's why some dealers will say, well, you didn't buy it here, and then they won't work on it. The reality is that it depends on the agreement between that dealer and the manufacturer of that product on whether or not they really have to do any repairs at all under the factory warranty. They might not be required to do that. It may be nothing more than a courtesy. And if you can get in there and get it fixed under the factory warranty, great. But if they won't get you in because you didn't buy it there, there's not a lot you can do about that. I have heard, though, that they're supposed to. Almost all manufacturers say, you know, you, you need to fix that, that product even if you don't sell it. But the reality, you know, it, we'll get to it, but it may be six months from now. I mean, they'll get to it, but they don't really get to it. Am I being a, a, a overly dramatic there? That kind of thing happens, doesn't it? It happens all the time. It's what we call a sunshine treatment. They tell you they're going to work on it, and then they sit it out in the back of the lot until they get around to working on it. And that can be a few days, a few hours, or a few months. You know, there are a few lawyers in this country, very few, who specialize in lemon law, and none of them are more respected than Ron Burge is. Ron is a friend of mine. He's a great friend of this show. And I suggest uh, that it's well advised to take what Ron Burge says to heart heart when it comes to how to make a warranty claim on your RV. If you believe that you may have a lemon RV or you know somebody who they think they have a lemon RV, you can get a free lemon law review by clicking on the link below. More on RV warranties next time. Until then, I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Thanks for watching.